Bar. Hello, everyone. The comics exposed. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks for the tip. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna... I'll talk to Mike about that, too. Um, thank you. I'm gonna talk to Mike about that, the auction, because uh, I have two pieces that I want to auction off. So... I might do one on Mike's stream tomorrow and then um, auction the other one. I'll see if I can get on Ethan's stream. Let's see. I don't know if he's got a roster already set or what, but I'll talk to Mike about that. I just saw that Mike's doing the live stream himself, so I should have jumped on his. But I'm just going to do a short one here. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, if you buy Agenda, this is what you'll be... Gating, this is a page from Agenda right here. I'm just adding in some details. This is going to be a splash page. And I have to add in details, kind of tighten up some things. I just added down black on here. Yeah, agenda's still up. We have it in demand. I think we have it for going for another... I don't know how long in, James wants to keep it up. I want everybody to get a chance to get in on. We didn't really um, promote the campaign like, you know, as much as I would like to have done it, but... So having it up now, I think it might get a little bit more exposure. So people get a copy. <laughs> the hand is freaking you, huh? That's cousin hits cousin. Cousin that. <laughs> Let's see. You know, what's funny is I had this rubber hand I got at the art store, and uh, I thought it looked cool, so I got it, and then I'm like, it's kind of pointless. It's, and then I realized, you know what, I could put my mono eraser in this thing, and it actually is freaky looking. But also, it has a nice uh, grip, makes it big enough, and if I need a helping hand, it's right there for me. <laughs> All my mistakes. <laughs> well, not all, but yeah. I'm gonna set my alarm here so that I don't get run too long. I can run so long on these things. Um, let's see. There we go. Hey, Rockwell Stevens, how's it going? Let's see, make sure you guys see what I'm doing. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. That hand's freaking out. Comics exposed, so I can zoom in a little so you can't see it. <laughs> I'm just gonna add a little detail into this globe. Yeah, this is like a, it's going to be a hologram. It's a little hologram, and uh, my brother Mikey is doing color, so he's going to work his magic and make it look like a hologram.
Yeah, it's cool. You guys, uh, you guys got to see the um, drone and quarter. Man, that was a fun one. And not because it was my first time winning first place. <laughs> but uh, every time I go on there, I feel like those guys, drawing with those guys really ups my game. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of talent, man, in that one. A lot of talent in one place, and you can feel that pressure to do your best. Because you know they're going to do some amazing pieces. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it shows the globe, man. I was like, I wasn't sure if John Malin, he always says flat earth is real. I was always, I didn't, I don't even know if he's serious about that or not. I haven't listened to any of his uh, live stream theories if he does do that, but I always thought he was joking, so I don't know. <laughs> I believe in the spherical earth. I don't believe in, uh, giant hologram or simulation <laughs> oh cool yeah yeah Rodwell you drew along yeah one of my friends he was drawing along as well yeah man I mean the first few times I did that man I was just like time was going it made me really speed up so I, fig I figured if I can draw that fast during I mean, get that much done during two hours, I can do that for a comic page. So I got really, I start kind of approaching the comic stuff like that. I mean, it's a little different, obviously, but for the most part, it's all deadline. Um, agenda, yeah, agenda is a serious. Uh, serious story. I mean, it has a little bit of humor in it as well. And, uh, but yeah, it's an adventure. It's got, I'm not sure. I've never read The Authority, so I'm not the authority on that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know um, exactly that storyline, but it's not like, I don't think it's deadly serious, but it has some serious stuff in it. Gonna be fun and all that. But it's basically the characters are, um, I don't think this is giving away to anything, but they basically have these abilities, powers, and um, as the story starts progressing, we find out that something is amiss, meaning these people have gained powers from a similar source. And uh, actually the character that we have right here is kind of investigating or monitoring what is going on and he's kind of cluing us in on that these these energy signatures or whatever they're similar and he believes well he has something to do with it. 
so. Hey, Tomb. How's it going? Yeah, I'll have to check it out. Check it out. Yeah, I think uh, James, the writer of Agenda, he actually uh, he actually knows Mark Miller and he knew him before he became you know a big name. Yeah, James Hubble knew a lot of these guys before they were really big. Sorry if I'm blocking the I'm trying to make sure I'm in the camera view. There we go. Oops, sorry. Make sure I don't want to block the camera with my crazy hair. Yeah, this is going to be a shorter, uh, shorter stream tonight, so. Sometimes I go, usually go for about two hours, two and a half hours, but I'll, I'll go a little shorter tonight. Maybe an hour, hour and a half tops. No, that's a good, I might try to see, like I said, if get on, um, see if I can get a spot on Ethan's auction. But I, I'm definitely going to be a Mike's. I'll have a piece for that. Hearing brutal honesty on my pick. Which pick? Because I can't help the way I look. <laughs> you gotta take that up with God. <laughs> Yeah. 
go. Mm. I'm not blocking the camera, I guess. Yeah, man, it's funny that I could feel the pressure when I'm drawing on those live streams. Uh, no. On those uh, drawing and quartered. It's, it's fun, though, man. It's like a great adrenaline rush because you get to see all this great art. And then you got to have it right on the spot for people to see. <laughs> it's funny, I was about to say that to some, I was about to say, I bet there's some people who are going to complain about my, my globe, about the tiny islands, like, hey, the island's not shaped that way. I try to use the, the map and try to get as close as I could, but that's as close as it's going to get. <laughs> Sorry. That's your island, right? Like the Irishman in the Braveheart. That's my island. Ireland's my island. It's almost sideways. I guess it depends on like how you're looking at the globe, right? At least I didn't do a flat earth version. So that, has any of you, uh, are you, do you know for certain if uh, John Malin, I guess I should ask him, but he always gives me a funny answer, so I think I asked him last time if he really believes in Flat Earth or if that's just his, uh, that's just his gimmick, his tagline at the end of every video. Yeah, I know. Yeah, he can... Yeah, Malin can be very sarcastic. It's that Michigan... It's that Michigan uh, sarcasm. Which is where I'm from, so... See, in Michigan, we can be very quick-witted. Or... Some people might say offensive, but we don't try to... At least not all of us try to be offensive. <laughs> but no, I think John Malin is always cracking me up, man. Like on those... Because I'm so focused on drawing, like I'm just listening to the back and forth. And someone will do like a... Put a zinger in there and he'll like... He'll backfire on them real quick. John Malin throws down some words...
think I got a message. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for your brutal honesty on my Facebook post there, too. <laughs> Did you vote for me? <laughs> I still gotta do some touch-ups on that. Becky, Becky's working, she's at home, uh, she might be listening tonight, but she's working on her own comic pages right now for, um, for our comic, for a convention at Comic Fest coming up next week, so we're gonna have it printed up soon, and that's the copy that I'm sending out to the winner of my last auction piece for that Agent Orange piece I did is actually be included in the um, in the comic, the art that I sent out, sold. Hey, Becky. She's listening. I gotta watch what I say now. <laughs> the music chimes in right when I say she's listening. Yeah, man, I can't believe that, um, <laughs> yeah, that music, dun, 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 no, I can't believe, man, Edwin got swatted, man, that's crazy, that was pretty wild, man, because I, I remember, I just read it about it on, uh, about in the comics, I think it was, they are talking about uh, that publisher just got swatted. And then, uh, I think, um, I think, what's this call? It was, uh, Edwin was just talking about it on Twitter, and then all of a sudden, boom, he got swatted. I was like, what? <laughs> An attack hug, yeah. That's Becky. Those attack hugs. First drank like triples 
when she's in hug mode. She can like crack ribs. <laughs> she can break you with love. Okay, zoom out a little bit here. I'm gonna, there we go. Boom. Boom. There we go. There we go. Hey, Mighty Geek. Yeah, it took me a little while to design the background on this thing. I wanted to, uh, I wanted to make, I always try to make something look different than what I see. I don't want to copy off other people's tech. Um, even though theirs is probably better than this, but <laughs> I want to do something that's different looking, hopefully, because it's different, it'll look interesting. Um, but yeah, it took me a while, because it's like, I'm designing this background, not drawing from pre-existing, so, but, uh, drawing, uh, drawing on that, drawing on quarter really does kind of, like, remind me just to go for it, man. Just start cranking it out. Yeah, background artist, man. Yeah, it makes sense that you see those Japanese artists who hire the art assistants when they do the backgrounds and everything. It is no joke, man. I mean, it's one thing drawing like existing backgrounds, but when you gotta come up with the concept and draw it at the same time, I mean, it's gotta be, because concept art, you can crank it out, you know, a bunch of roughs, you don't have to be real tight. You, because you're just looking for a concept, and once you find the concept, then yeah, you can do it. But man, the comics, you gotta crank out a page, you gotta do concept design and finished art at the same time. Well, at least I do, because I'm, I'm a crunch. Yeah, the background can be tricky. I think it's just because it's so time consuming. It's just about time. Like figures you can crank them out. And then the background is like, you have to make it look interesting. That's why I camera, that's why I do layouts. I try to think of camera angles that make the, uh, make the whole panel seem interesting. So even if the background is maybe a little off, at least the angle will kind of help sell it. So I respect guys who try something out and might not succeed totally, the, but as long as it's creative, it tries some dynamic angle or look, then suck you into the story, then that's, that's cool. I, I, I forgive bad perspective if it's, as long as it's not too horrible, but as long as it's creative. Oh yeah, background artist. Man, you gotta be patient. <laughs> and you also have to enjoy it, because that's one thing I learned, is I used to hate backgrounds, drawing backgrounds. 
but now I just look at it as I try to force myself to look at it as a pleasurable thing just to help me get through it and now I actually if I focus and get past the uh, daunting feeling you, you have when you're first going to start it just focus on it and then when you get into it man it's just you kind of get lost in it but at the same time you gotta focus on getting done in time because of deadlines so you can't have too much fun I guess as a balance I guess you want to have fun but you can't get too comfortable and relaxed was it Macho Man would say that oh yeah who does the voices by the way I, I keep I know Elliot and uh Brian I think it's Brian doing the voices the Macho Man because he doesn't use his real name um no, oh, Elliot does. He's, he's uh, the monger. What is it? Um, jerk monger. Elliot. Okay, it's Elliot. He's his his uh mon his moniker is jerk monger, right? His handle. Okay, cool, thanks, jerkmonger. Meal and try. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Background fills half the story. Yep. I mean, the background really can draw you into a scene. And, um, I used to think that, you know, I mean, backgrounds are important, and I used to think that you had to draw backgrounds in every panel, because if you didn't, you'd be, it's like you're wimping out. But the truth is, if you draw back on every single panel, um, it actually gets becomes tedious, and I think it interferes with the story. Because there's some moments where you want to highlight the character's reaction, you want to create a mood, and so the background is just like, yeah, you want at least one p panel of background in every page. That's my my thing. At least one panel to establish the background, and then you can have you know close-ups, medium shots, or whatever. Okay, Brian Josh, Michael Kine. Yeah, Michael Kine, man. I love that. Uh, he does a good one, too. I do one on my own. I try to practice. Michael Kane and Christopher Walken. Some days I can do Christopher Walken. Some days. I can, if I get in the zone. Otherwise, it turns into some creepy, weird voice that doesn't even sound like Michael Kane. I mean, not my theme, but uh, Christo Christopher Walken. He's got that weird cadence. Oh, yeah, Spider-Man. I mean, yeah, Spider-Man. Dude, if you could do a Spider-Man comic, you have to do... I mean, you can creatively get around the backgrounds with Spider-Man, but it depends on the story. But you definitely... He's got to cling to walls. You have to orientate where he is, what wall he is on the ceiling or the wall, and yeah, you gotta draw buildings. Maybe that's one book I might not want to ever do if I was an artist doing that. I mean, I don't, I'm not, I'd rather create my own stuff, so I'm not one of those guys who wants to work on other books, but there was a point, there was a time when I did, but not any longer. I want to just create my own stuff. Time is short. And I want to get quicker and create my own stuff. But yeah, Spider-Man, man. Those backgrounds. Whew. I'm working with one artist right now. And, um, I, I One artist I know, he does Spider-Man issues. He's a really good artist. Um, he did uh, Letter 44 for Oni. And he's doing some Spider-Man stuff. Um, I think it just came out one of the issues he did some work for um, 
I think it has um, Craven the Hunter on the cover. I don't think he did the cover, but I think he did some interiors. Alberto, I think I think you, Alberto Jimenez, Albuquerque, I think it is. That's how it looks, at least. I don't know if it's Albuquerque, Albuquerque. Sorry, Alberto, if I get your name wrong, how to pronounce it there. If you're listening to this, you never know. Yeah, he's a really cool guy. So buy that Spider-Man book with his art in it. I can't remember what issue it's on. It just came out, at least that's what he says on his Instagram. Yeah, I love Craven, man. That the story, my favorite Craven story is in art was with um, the Spider-Man issue that um, Mike Zek did. Where he's like, you know, he's like diving into this room full of spiders and like eating handfuls of spiders oh man it's so crazy <laughs> i think he buries spider-man alive when he's wearing the uh, black suit the covers and the interiors man so good on that okay i think i'm gonna just add in the black on the background just so i get an idea of how it's starting to look Yeah, I need to get a new mic too when I do live streams. You can hear me on the drawing cord. I'm always making noise. I'm trying not to, but I'm making noise, rattling stuff around, and I guess it picks it up. My headset that I'm using. Because everybody's complaining every time I move just an inch. Zoom in a little bit. Yeah, man, Craven. Yeah, definitely. He's a he's a hunter, man. Planning things out. Yeah, I like that when you got villains or heroes that don't rely on superpowers. I think that's why I like uh, Batman and the Punisher because they're not like um, they gotta go in somebody who's got powers they don't like back down just because they have powers they just figure out a way to beat the character <laughs> yeah I like those kind of characters man against impossible odds and it doesn't sway him at all he just goes but he goes headlong, but at the same time, he's, he uses his brain. That's probably why he goes headlong. He's using his head to think it through. Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't know if this irritated Mike using this uh, brush pen. I just dip it in ink because it ran out of ink. And it's a pain to refill, and I didn't want to buy any refills for it because, like, I don't know how much it costs, like eight bucks for a refill or something like that. I don't know. Maybe it's cheaper, maybe five bucks. But they don't last that long, man. The refills. And, uh, instead of using a regular paintbrush, which I'd have to clean, which isn't really too big a deal, but this one, I just pop the cap back on and just go to work. See, with a brush, you have to actually, you do have to actually wash it right after you've done using it, or the ink will just dry and crust up on there. And I want to get this done quickly. Speaking of quick, man, Mike Miller, man, he can really crank out the, the inks just, like, fast, man. He's like, I looked at his uh, Shazam piece. Man, that was crazy. All that lightning and electricity and how fast he just inks. Well, just draws and inks. But, yeah. Impressive, man. Because it, it'd be, imp see, it's impressive because it's the quality of work, too. It would just be one thing, but it's the quality. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. See, the kind of ink I'm using, I use Black Cat. It's, um, waterproof ink. Which usually works pretty good with the whiteout that I use, the whiteout correction pens. The whiteout correction pens, um, sometimes they, if the ink's not waterproof, it tends to like just re wet the ink and just smears or turns gray. But this ink, it usually handles pretty well. You go over it with the whiteout and it just stays black. It doesn't, doesn't resurface over the white or with the white. A little bit of movement in the back, it's just my the colors of agenda. Mikey, my brother, working in the background. Ah, <laughs> to him, yeah, but who won? I'm enjoying my little victory this week. You never know, man, on that drawn and quarter. You never know who's got going to win. You just never know. That's, that's the fun of it. You just don't know. It's a lot of trash talking, but... People voting, you just never know which way they're going to go. There's one time I thought Mike Miller had it in the bags. I, I wasn't on that one of the nights, and I um, I DM'd him on the uh, Facebook a Messenger, and I was like, dude, you got this in the bag. And then he, he didn't. I, I can't remember which place he didn't get it. I think he got second or third. And he was like, well, I think it wasn't in the bag, obviously. I'm no Nostradamus when it comes to drawing quarter, that's for sure. Anybody's game.
<laughs> Becky, yeah. Thanks. See, that's what I got out of the winning. Becky uh, bought me a Hokkaido oolong milk tea for winning. <laughs> that was my prize. The sweet taste of victory. Yeah, man, brush. I have to practice with brush. I used to be afraid to use brush. Um, I've actually, I use brush pen to ink, like Time Cheetah comic, like the whole thing is brush pen. Of course, you know, tech pens for background. But yeah, the whole book I used brush pen. And then I'm like, you know what? For agenda, I'm using the dip pens, the nibs, Japanese nibs. I want to go for more of the manga feel. Yeah. I actually used, believe it or not, I uh, years ago when I worked at some books for um, Boom Studios, they did a, a mini series called Hunter's Fortune, and I used uh, on the last issue, or I think it was the last issue, I was on a deadline crunch. So I actually used Sharpie markers. I bought like a pack of Sharpies and just used that to spot black. Because I was on a deadline that was just like, I was cranking out like two pages, three pages a day, pencils and inks. And I was just like, I need to get this done, man. So I went to like, I was like in the middle, I just moved to California too. And I was finishing up the last issue and I was just like, on a, I was on a shoestring budget so I couldn't buy ink. I was just buying Sharpies. And cranking up with, you know, I was using tech pen, zebra brush pen, and then uh, sharpies for the black fills and yeah. I actually have a video of me doing that on my uh, YouTube channel. It's like a from like 2010, I think 2009, 2010 video. back with a freaking milky pen and just touch up some of these little tiny things. Let's see. Zoom out a little bit. So you see a little bit of it starting to take some shape. That's the thing when you're doing these. I'm just trying to go as fast as possible. And if I get in, if I go outside of a line, I just gotta go in and touch it up later, so just gotta grin and bear it if I go outside of a line or in, in an area I didn't want to. That's the beauty of black and white art. Uh, thanks, Becky. Hey, see. Tomb, it says, if I'm going to have to remind you every day about Stan. About Stan? You mean Stan the man? Scratch. Oh, 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 oh. I know what you're talking about. Stan Sakai. Nope. Stan Sakai, man. Private, just uh, send me a message, messenger message, and uh, next week when I'm at the con to remind me because I'll be hustling, selling art, and doing commission sketches and selling comics. We got an artist alley table. 
Comic Fest San Diego. So if any of you guys are in the area, stop by. There's going to be a lot of guys there. James is going to be sitting at our table uh, for two of the days. And we have those uh, postcards, agenda postcards, that we're going to be giving out. Signing. Kind of help promote agenda, which is still up on Indiegogo. In demand. Comic Fest. Yeah, I'll grab you a postcard. I'll get one for you, too. Let's see. Okay. That's right. Becky will be there with us at Comic Fest, sitting side by side selling her book, which actually she she's working on a story that's going to be included in a book anthology that Mike and I are working on. So it's gonna be three stories from Mikey, myself and Becky. Short story, self-contained. Yeah, man, Stanley. It's crazy. He's gone now too. I mean, so many greats, you know, just iconic guys leaving, and it's like it's gonna be weird. Cause I mean, he's showing up in the Marvel movies. And he's not going to be in him. I don't know if he did anything for this uh, the next one. He might have filmed something before he passed for the last Avengers Endgame, which is kind of fitting because I think um, it's like this is going to be. A, I don't know if it is officially, but I think it's the last movie for a lot of the guys like Iron Man and Captain America, and Thor, and all those guys. I think it's the last one. I think. Like, literally, it's the last movie, last end game for all of them, I guess. Dang it. Yeah, it was funny. Uh, yeah, I guess it'd be nice to see him like, hang around for a little bit at least. I know Robert Downey Jr. talked about. Um, he said he said he only has a ten-year window to crank out as many Iron Man movies as possible. 
because I think he was like his point was that he's getting older and his shelf life <laughs> is a limited expiration date but no man I think people they don't care he's getting older they don't nowadays I mean you got like Stallone and Schwarzenegger and these guys Van Damme they're all 70 50 approaching 60 and they're still fans still want to see him doing action movies Oh yeah, Mighty Geek Studios, um, you're a big Stan Lee uh, fan, uh, we were listening to, um, uh, Mike, said, I'm sorry, Jim Storenko, and Storenko was talking about his, uh, interaction with, with, um, Stan Lee, it's pretty funny, he has some really good stories, but yeah, Jim Storenko was talking about how he wanted to do this cover, and on the cover, it was just like uh, all white, no background, and just um, one of the main characters just like kneeling down. And uh, I can't remember exactly which cover it was, but Stanley was like, "You can't do that. Look at all these comic covers." You see, he pointed to like all these comics. He said, "Look at all the colors and the details and all that." And he said, You're gonna put nothing on the cover, leave it white. And his whole point with the stand was, "Yeah." Cause it's gonna stand out on the rack. It's gonna be all white next to all these detailed covers. It's gonna stand out on the rack when they put it out on the shelf. And uh, he, I guess he argued with Stan and um, Stan finally, I don't know if he quit over it or Stan Lee was like uh, said he'd be fired if he did it or, but anyway, they, Stan Lee called him up and like, he didn't have to, he just said, Jim, Jim and Jim is like Stan and then they just laughed and he just like did the cover he told the story better <laughs> that's what I was thinking I was thinking you had a beer I can't huh? I can't I cannot <laughs> tell the story I cannot I cannot do the yarn that Stan I mean not sorry that uh Jim Steranko Weaves, man, that guy. I don't know if you subscribe to or follow his uh, Twitter. I don't know as of late, but it was a couple of years ago, man. He was like on Twitter, just his thread was going like for dozens and dozens and dozens of like it was like a novel being written on Twitter. That was fun. We're following that. He was talking about. <laughs> He's talking about slapping um, Bob Kane. I think it, no, no, he was, that was not on Twitter. That was in person, he talked about that. He talked about on Twitter, he was talking about um, making a zip gun when he's, this gang was like picking on him in school and they're beating him up every day. And he got so sick of it, he made this zip gun that fires, you know, homemade gun that fires one bullet. And he brought it and he's just gonna shoot the first guy who like, he actually lured them. These three guys, two or three guys, he lured them to this um, to this drainage, um, I don't want to say ditch, the reservoir, and he was like gonna just, he lured them there so he could just shoot them, and uh, one of the guys took off running and he saw this guy to get down and beg for his murder life or something like that. I was like, dang. He said he was just tired of getting beat every day. And the guy just just fled, screaming. <laughs> yeah, you can be happy just slapping people all day at <laughs> Marvel. No, I've I've had my moments where I felt like slapping people in the comic industry that I worked with. <laughs> well, actually, you know what? I didn't work directly with them. I've been blessed that most people I work with are really cool. I'm actually friends with them off of, outside of comics. I became friends with them. And, uh, yeah. I work with really good guys. I mean, I've, I've communicated with guys who weren't cool. Some really big name guys who I won't name. <laughs> but 
yeah. I don't know. They, I didn't have good interaction with... Well, I mean, on my end, that was cool, but... They blow a lot of smoke. They would, um... Talk up. They'd do projects, and... And, you know, they had no intention, or they just... Didn't care. I don't know. A lot of talk. <laughs> Name them. Two months gonna name him. <laughs> uh, I don't have any squabbles with him now, but I don't know. I I know how they are in person dealing with them. I got burnt. One of them is a publisher that actually released. They released a book that's kind of like made the headline news and. It, on CNN even. They did a political comic and a publisher I did work for. I actually met a really good friend who uh, was an editor there. I'm still friends with him. And uh, he's a writer as well, a letterer. He actually does professional lettering for Udon Comics. Marshall Dillon, really good guy, man. Really good guy. Give you the shirt off his back type of guy. So I'm always happy to work with him. Yeah, there's a lot of guys. Like that one publisher I did work for. Actually, this was like even just like, I don't know. Four or five years ago maybe less but I did work for him I did a cover full color cover oh my line I did a full color cover and uh comic San Diego comic convention was coming up and I the, the paycheck was gonna come in right before the con so I have some extra money for the convention and uh when it's time to come pay me they only sent me half my money. And so I emailed the um, publisher, who I know. I talked to him on the phone, I know him first name. And I kept saying, hey, they didn't send me uh, the um, accounts payable. They didn't send me all my money. And I kept emailing them, and they no one ever responded. It was just like dead silence. And then the week, next week, right after the convention, he like emails me and goes, he did a, um, a group email with me and the accounts payable, you know, the account department, county department. And he's like, hey, go ahead and uh, pay Matt the rest of his money, you know? And uh, man, I didn't respond back at all. I was just, that was it. I just, I was like, well, we're done. Cause I really needed that money and he only gave me half of it for no reason. He didn't, we didn't agree on half payment down. And uh, he just withheld my half of my money, and then would return my email, and then just goes, "Oh yeah, by the way, pay Matt the rest of his money." Because that was it. Like, that was it. I'm like, man. Cause, I mean, I, I work my butt off turning art on time. <laughs> what? What's going on? I'm watching a video of uh, seeing who can kill more a dog or. Uh, can kill more rats or a mink. <laughs> and this little dog loves killing. <laughs> <laughs> he loves the killing. I mean, he's like happy. Like the big dogs are even looking at him going, jeez, man. Jeez. He like shakes those rats to death. And, yeah, it's like, <laughs> oh my gosh. The other dog's just <laughs> playing with one. That little one's like, I'll, I'll tear them all up. Those Jack Russell Terriers, man, they love to kill little rodents. That's what it is, too. Yeah, Jack Russell Terriers. Man, he loves, vicious. he loves it. They're vicious, man. <laughs> Jack Russell. I love the way they look, man, but they are... The big dogs can't even get hostile. as many as he's getting. He's snapping their necks and throwing them and going to the next one. Yeah. Hey. He loves the killing, this one. 
This guy just calls himself a mink Henry. He has a mink and he hunts rats. <laughs> so he's gonna see how many hit he can kill in the shortest time. Yeah. Freaking disgusting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the one cover. Yeah, might as well. The burnt bridge is pretty much burnt with that guy, but. Yeah, I did that cover, man. I won't name any names. I just don't like talking about people behind their backs. Even when they deserve it, I just don't like it. Only if it's good things I like talking about. Yeah, like, um, like I said, Marshall Dillon, Alberto Jimenez, Albuquerque. Those are two good guys that I always glad to work with. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. The little dogs, man, are vicious. The big one cleans up, he picks him up and throws the dead body in the bucket. Really? Yeah. Yeah, those little dogs, man, he's like, oh, there's one, boom, boom, you're dead. Gotcha, gotcha. Dang. Gosh. Jeez. <laughs> the, the little dog, these guys are digging up rats, and run, the rat runs out of the cage, and the little dog just scoops them up and shakes it to death. It's not out of a cage, it's out of a hole in the ground. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah he runs out of a hole, and boom. Okay. Let us see here. He's a little Hannibal Lecter. He's ripped a couple of faces off. Dang. <laughs> yeah, little cutties. That, that big dog looked like, darn, man. <laughs> yeah, the like, dog. A lot of rage. Yeah, Comic Fest. Comic Fest is great, man. It's like. It's the original founders or creators of Comic Con, San Diego Comic Con, and they decided to create another convention that would be more intimate, kind of like it was in the early days. Of mostly, they have some actors. If they have any actors, it's most it's going to be like old school actors, like from like old films, you know, not like any new guys. So that's not what's drawing the crowd. Is you know, it's not like a bunch of popular actors at the time of the time. But it might be some guy, old guys from science fiction films. Like, I actually talked to, uh, I have a picture taken with the guy who played Jimmy Olsen in the original Christopher Reeve Superman movies. And I didn't even know it was him. Because, you know, well, he's a redhead brunette guy in the old movies of the 70s. But he was talking to the guy next to me, his friend, um, Mike Oshanker, was doing, selling his comics. And Mike Oshanker, he's like, lives in LA and he has a lot of connections with different Hollywood people. And, he worked for a um, newspaper that he interviewed a lot of guys. And uh, anyway, he came up and he was talking to him and he always, he knows somebody who knows somebody. So I guess the guy who played Jimmy Olsen was a um, musician. He is in a band as well. And uh, they both knew some guy. They were acquaintances. Or he knew an acquaintance and he hooked up the guy with like a drummer, like a prospective drummer for his band. And uh, he was really nice. And I didn't know who it was until he walked away. And then I saw, I just went, chased after him. And I was like, dude, I didn't know it was you. I was like, can I have a picture with you? And he's like, yeah, no problem, man. He was a really cool guy. But, uh, oh, was it Mike Royer? Um, Jack Kirby's inker. Jack Kirby's Inker, man. Wow. Jack Kirby's Inker was, uh, he goes there. He's been there the last few conventions at Comic Fest, and, um, I showed him some of my work, and he was like, he's really cool. He was, <laughs> he's kind of like a, um, a player, you know, like when there's women around, and like, he's kind of like the most smooth, maybe a little less, maybe not smooth. I don't know. I don't want to be spread any rumors but <laughs> anyway he ain't shy around the ladies but no he's a cool guy man Mike Royer was uh, well I don't want to say too much but anyway 
Yeah, he uh, looked at my stuff and he liked um, my Agent Orange comic I showed him. He liked the inking and the comic storytelling. <laughs> yeah, I gotta watch it. This is the Me Too generation uh, time period. I don't want to get him in trouble. He's old school. But yeah, no, Comic Fest, um, the last few, one of my favorites is um, William Stout. William Stout's a great, fantastic painter. But he's also did concept art and illustration for a lot of films. Um, yeah, he worked with Spielberg. He uh, worked on the original, um, was it Return of the Living Dead? I think it was, is it Return of the Living Dead? The one with the tar monster, the tar zombie? Black tar zombie. He actually made a cameo as a homeless man in that film too. <laughs> but he's always he's got stories, man. Like you want to talk about film, eighties film. He's been like either worked on those films or helped in some capacity. And um like he worked on Predator, he helped with the lighting on Predator, but Schwarzenegger and all those guys. So I mean he's he's definitely got a lot of stories to tell him. Every time I stop by and talk with William Stout, he's always got something new that I'm just finding out about. But yeah, if you guys, like I said, are in the area, man, stop by. It's going to be four-day convention. So it's going to be Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday next uh, next week. The seventh through the tenth. Yeah, hope I didn't put you guys to sleep with that uh, Gregorian chant. <laughs> this is the soundtrack, so you can tell it's a period piece. Let's see. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. I can see a little bit of this one is about mood so it's gonna be like mostly all silhouettes and the colors mikey's and work his magic and get these monitors like a glow and they got dialogue balloons jeez <laughs> that dog shook the rat so hard his head popped off yeah i ain't freaking a <laughs> Hey, James. Yeah. Yeah, James is going to be uh, there for two days. And he'll be, you can find him at Artist Alley at our table when he's not roaming around. <laughs> so he, he'll be there signing. Yeah, it's fun, man. It's it's a nice, intimate comic convention, as they like, I think they coin it that way, too. It's all comics. And uh, sometimes you'll see surprised people just not even guests. They'll just walk in. Like Steve Rude. He's a guest this year, but last year, or two years, three years ago, he walked in. Just walked in, checked it out, was talking to people, shooting the breeze. So James, you going to have the uh, those postcards? Are we giving them? We're giving them away, handing them out, right? Is that what we're doing? Sign them. Yeah, give them away. Yeah, Tomb here is uh, one of their backers on the agenda. So I want to get, he wants one. 
he commissioned me for um, he commissioned me for some art, so I was gonna include it in the package sent out to him. Postcards, he was like, You gotta give me one of those. He also wants the cover, Dave Dorman's cover. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling Dave Dorman's going to be keeping that original painting until he sells it. I don't know. That's my, my guess. <laughs> Unless James is going to get gifted with a painting. Sometimes that happens, right? Yeah, definitely like to get back on uh, Ethan's live stream. Ethan has an auction, I guess, on Saturday, I think it is. And um, I was going to try to get in. Let's talk to Mike and see if I can get in on the auction, but try to pitch again. But we definitely wish you get in. Just Ethan's like, he loves plugging people's stuff, so he wouldn't have a problem at all. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'll uh, I'll talk to Mike. You have to talk to Mike to be able to. I'm gonna see if, because I don't know. Like I said, I don't know what the, the uh, what the roster looks like for Ethan's auction. I mean, obviously he's got a, um, he's got a very large pool on his live stream, so definitely would want to see if I can talk to him though about getting in, at least promote agenda with you, James. It was fun last time too. But he helped start he'll he up launch the uh, agenda on his uh, live stream cerebro what's what is cerebro which, who is he? Uh, 
Oh, background. Background. Ah, is it, um, well, because it's, I gave a, this room is like a rounded feel to it. At least this corner of the room. But any uh, similarities are all coincidental because I do not use any references. I actually stay away from comic references because I don't want to accidentally even like subconsciously use anything. Sometimes things end up looking similar though. You can't help it because there's images locked away in your brain and you end up using them years later or using something similar to it. Yeah, Tomb, I did ask, what is Cerebro? <laughs> hey man, I, it's been a while since I've got any X-Men books. Or even, I, you know, I haven't even seen that movie X-Men um, since it came out, so I don't even know what year that was, but it's been a while. I've only seen it once. I don't know, I wasn't a huge fan of the first X-Men film. Um, I think it got... A little better for the second one. I think it was the second one where Wolverine was like taking out all these these soldiers in the uh, mansion. That was a pretty cool scene. Yeah, it's just a small corner of the room that he's in. So don't worry, it won't look like it. But you know what? It's, there's always going to be similarities, like well, your brain automatically tries to connect an image that you see with something you're familiar with. I don't know if it's like, it's like an automatic thing. So you might see some stuff in there, which I'm cool with, because, like I said, you always want to, uh, to tell you that in design school, you start off using something that really exists to base your design off of. So that way it has a familiar, yeah familiarity to it so it's not too alien and too weird people can like you know feel a connection to it even though it might be alien and I, I didn't really go to school but I took some design classes actually I had the best in high school we had um, commercial art class at the Career Center and this is only unfortunately only for one year but for one year I only had three classes in my normal high school and then crossed the street with the career center and I, the rest of the half of the day was all art. And uh, my instructor from that class, he actually was an instructor for college professors. Like he would hold seminars for professors to help them teach. And um, man, this guy was like, he was like a motivational speaker every day. And he would tr do psychological things on people like the students to uh get through them like he would like what the first day of class we walked in and my uncle was friends with him my uncle's a professional artist and um he's friends with the teacher and the family so his family so he told me oh he's great you know love him he's a real nice guy well the first day of class mr hubert was his name he he walks into class and he just starts talking to the kids we're all sitting there listening and he starts using like racial slurs and um, talking about, <laughs> he's talking about George Washington Carver. He's like, yeah, he's, yeah, that guy was really a creative little N-word, wasn't he? And he goes, yeah, he just, you know, created all this and that. And then everyone was just shocked because he's just like throwing all these racial slurs. And then he walked up to one of the kids and he's just like, uh, hey, what's wrong? Yeah, and the kid's like, uh, he goes, something wrong? And the kid's like, I just never heard a teacher talk like this before. And he's just like, oh, does it make you feel uncomfortable? And he's like, yeah, it does. And then he's like, good, because I, I don't want you talking like that during class. 
or any time when you're here because there's a diverse group of people and it just interferes with you know he goes he wants cohesion he wants people to have be free to be creative but he just created this whole thing where I was like cracking up the whole time I had to put my head down because I was like going to start crying laughing out loud because I knew that he was doing what he was doing and everyone's face was just freaked out and then uh, he goes hey you're uh, Dave's nephew right and I go yeah and he just smiled and he's like you're gonna like it here I go thanks man and uh, he's definitely one of my favorite teachers. Hey, all cool 53. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> yeah, the teacher was fun, man. He was, he was great, though. He just, uh, he wanted to shock people, and then he said, you don't like that, do you? I said, Good, I don't want to hear anybody talking crap and putting people down in my class. Yeah, this was a time where it wasn't as diehard PC as it is now. He'd probably be fired if he didn't do that today. He's probably long retired though now. Man, I feel sorry for kids today, man. They didn't get the colorful teachers like they probably had in the past. All right, man. See you later, James. Have a good one. <laughs> yeah, I know. I thought you were just trying to get my attention, James. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. And by the way, James is the writer of Agenda, the comic I'm working on right now. So check it out. On Indiegogo, we have some sample pages up on the link in the description so you want to check that out if you haven't already thanks for stopping by james see you at comic fest yeah this is for uh, agenda and this is the introduction of one of the characters splash page um i everything's going to be dark and silhouetted like he's in a dark room and there's gonna be his introductions through dialogue. And the next page will gradually reveal him towards the end of the page as he'll come out of the shadows. So right now I'm just laying down all the black ink, mostly silhouette, shadow. I'm gonna to touch it up with some white, white pen, little details here and there. It's gonna be like, this is like a giant hologram. I'm not, I'm not certainly clear if it's going to be a ship he's inside. <laughs> yeah, Tomb, it's an echo. It's the virtual echo in the World Wide Web. So yeah, it's um, Al, is it all cool or Al Cool 53? Thanks, man. Appreciate it. How did you uh, find my YouTube channel, by the way? Is it on Twitter? Or uh, Drawn and Quartered? Oh, you make skits on uh, YouTube? I'll have to check your channel out. I actually wanted to start uh, doing that myself. Actually, I created a YouTube channel just to do, <laughs> to create some like short little film script, skits, animations. But now I'm doing live stream.
make it you started making videos a month ago? Oh, that's cool. That's, sometimes I'll do that. I'll just like start searching for a live stream, uh, mostly comp cards and stuff. So you, there's a lot of good stuff out there you can discover. Just using that little search engine on YouTube. Oh yeah, Tomb, yep. I'm actually, uh, I got some ideas for the uh, Sinister. Um, gonna, probably my next live stream will probably be doing that. Which, let's see, I gotta finish some stuff for that comic fest, so I'll try to do it right before maybe. <laughs> Let's see, okay, all these um, are just going to be all monitors, screens, so I'm going to have to put some images into there, and it's going to be like locations that he's um, monitoring, because the characters, these characters will all have uh, unexplained powers, and they have a similar energy reading. And I think this guy, he knows where they're obtaining this from, this newfound powers. He's kind of investigating what's going on. Actually, they're using, these characters are using technology that is beyond their own it's beyond their own time and of, you know, their own natural uh, evolution of technology on planet Earth. So he's he's investigating that because it comes from his, without giving it away, it comes from his either time or era or world. But I mean, he's human, I believe. But. <laughs> you said maps you're uploading your ad to YouTube So you know Australia?
Oh, okay, I think I know what you're saying. Ah, so those, those ads pretty much, are they worth it? Add the YouTube ad? Ah, YouTube ads. 11K is pretty good. Viewers. Here's some that audience. Oh, that's cool. 15 bucks. Huh. I think I will think about that one. get some more reach I'm using this channel to try to advertise for my uh, comic projects and stuff Yeah, it's got to be for yeah, pre-made videos. I'm going to start doing those too. I definitely want to try uh, doing some ads. I saw them on Facebook, you could do ads, but I think I'd rather do YouTube. I think people respond to videos more than they do just stationary, like static art. They can watch you do something. Yeah, um, Mike and I usually, since we're in California, we just usually just do conventions in California. Um, we did one in Vegas a couple years ago. Actually, it's, man, it was a while ago now. Um, we used to do conventions in Detroit. And, uh, but we're going to try to branch out. I think when we get more of our body work built up, like in different comic issues and stuff, we'll probably do that. Go back and uh, do some maybe Detroit conventions. We did Chicago conventions as well. Chicago Wizard World we did. That was years ago. Um, try what else we do. Vegas, Detroit, Chicago, LA. We did one in Long Beach. Hey, thanks, King Crow. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> yeah, Charlotte, I, I've heard about that one. Um, let's see. Al Cool Fifty Three. Um. You can see, uh, I got a link in the description, the Indiegogo. You can see some pages from this comic book that I'm doing right now. Also, I have Instagram on there, I believe, at links 
on the description as well. But you can see uh, different posts. I have the cover of Agendas up. It's a Dave, Dave Dorman did a cover, alternative cover, for the Agenda. And Dave Dorman's the uh, painter, he does Star Wars covers. So he did the cover for this one, it looks great. It's cool seeing uh, some art, other artists do the take on your characters. Yes, Agenda, that's it. Agenda. And don't worry, it's not a, it is not a political book. These characters, they all have their own agendas. They have their own view of how the world should be. So they, they kind of run into some conflict with each other. They all have different perspectives. And it's up to the viewers, the readers, Cool. Hey, thanks, King Crow. Yeah, thanks, all cool fifty three. Thank you. Yeah, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, and I'll be posting more videos. I've been doing live streams, and I'm gonna try to make some. Uh, I know I owe a video. To, I had a contest running for Agenda. And I gotta fulfill that, so I'm gonna make a new video where I draw some names, and the people who have participated will win some original art. And uh, I'll run some more contests too later. Right now, I've just been so busy with the deadline for the book and some other commission work. But I'll run some more contests where people can, you know. Like this last contest, what we did was I had people share the link for Agenda on their Twitter or Facebook or YouTube. And uh, all the people sharing it, I entered their names in a hat. And I'm going to draw their names out and the winner gets some free art. Plus some other goodies. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Tim. Yeah, I got a few pieces. I have, um... I gotta finish up this one. I'm gonna... I mean, it's pretty finished. I just want to touch it up. There's some things I want to do. I had to finish it in two hours, drawn and quartered, so... I want to go in and kind of do some touch-ups before I put it up for auction. Yeah, thanks, King Crow. Yeah, thanks, Tomb. Yeah, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna inquire about trying to. I'm, I have two, two pieces I'm gonna auction off. Um, this is one of them, and then I have another Battle Angel Alita. And I'm trying to figure out. Um, someone made a suggestion, and to. Um, to see if I can auction it off on Ethan's stream, which is on Saturday. Um, I'm, I might, I think I uh, might do this one on Mike's just because Mike was gracious enough to let me be on uh, that night's drawn and quartered. But I don't know, we'll see. I'll, I'll talk to him about it and see what he thinks. Cause he's probably got some heavy hitters going on there selling some high ticket items and uh yeah funds can get dried up pretty quickly uh, among the bidders oh uh yeah uh al, al cool 53 i used the uh, Copic marker and I'm actually going to use some Zipatone, gray tone, Japanese Zipatone to add to the uh, to 
add to this as well. But yeah, Copic marker. I wanted to do more to it with Copic, but I ran out of time. <laughs> yeah, Copics actually, they smell good to me though, man. They do smell good. I mean, I don't sniff them, but <laughs> I don't sniff them either. <laughs> I have some uh, other markers that just smell really, really strong, man. They're not, they don't smell good. They don't smell bad, but they're not good. They don't smell good. They're pretty strong. But they they last me for years and years. They never dry out. It's crazy. Hey, do I have any Masters of the Universe picks? Uh, Tomb, I do not. I actually wouldn't mind doing some. I did that. I sold that um, Skeletor piece on uh, Mike's auction it was a while ago I think it was last month the Skeletor one sold pretty quick Zoom in a little bit here so you can get a better view of what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, those markers, I'll show you what they look like. I got it right here. These markers are the real deal, man. Chart pack. Chart pack, man. Man, I can smell it right when I open up the box. <laughs> Don't even have to take the lid off these things, man. They are potent stuff. Let's see, can you see that chart pack? The bottom, there it goes. Chart pack. These things, I've had these oh, for years. Look at that tip. It's like totally, you can see it's saturated, man. That thing will never run out. It has never... Rona on me, no matter how many times I use it, it just keeps putting ink, it's weird. And it is strong. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, you're gonna like it, man. I'm gonna do the best I can do to make sure you you're happy with that Mr. Sinister commission of course you're the final judge but I'm gonna do my best <laughs> yeah that's the good stuff you can smell the marker all the way from here <laughs> all the way from there at least things man Real deal. And let's see, I want this on camera. Here we go. Make sure you guys can see what I'm doing.
Oh yeah, Black Adam. I'm not real familiar with the um, Shazam characters. Uh, but I know as The Rock, Dwayne Johnson's going to be playing, I believe he's going to be playing Black Adam in the movie. So I try to give him a little bit of the people's eyebrow in this, in this pick. <laughs> I don't know if anybody got that during Drawing draw the Quarter. And oh, by the way, uh, Al Cool 53, if you're not familiar, you can check out um, Drawn and Quartered, Blacklist Universe. They uh, they do a contest every Wednesday, 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. We have a bunch of artists all show up at one place, live stream, and we all draw uh, one character, our versions of one character in two hours. And then we have everybody in the chat vote on what what is their which one's their favorite and uh so this piece i'm doing right now touch-ups on this one uh one uh yesterday thanks to the people voting for me i won my first gold medal because a lot of good artists in there Yeah, uh, Drawn and Quartered, it's all like um, professional artists. And uh, they do have a fan version of that show that you might be able to get on if you... Uh, I don't know how that works exactly, but whoever wins the fan version of that show gets to come on to the uh, pro version and compete with the pros. So look for that fan, uh, Drawn and Quartered fan edition. Drawn and Quartered, yeah. But check out the uh, pro one. It's pretty good. People trash talk each other. Um, <laughs> it's all fun. And then we also have auctions where we sell off some original art. That's also fun. Especially for the artists, I think. The artists are like, all right, this is fun. Now we can eat tomorrow. I don't have to skip lunch. The second breakfast. Sorry, I'm I'm inking off page here, off camera. I mean. Just gotta make sure I look and see what I'm doing. Okay, here we go. <laughs> you become a pro. <laughs> it's not snipping markers. I don't think you last two hours. <laughs> hey, Tomb, yeah. I think Mike, I'll talk to him again and uh, to remind him, I don't know if he probably will, but put that sinister on the auction tomorrow. Just make sure you're there, man.
Thanks. Gotta be careful when you're inking, man. Uh, ink doesn't dry as fast as you want it to sometimes. Mudger returns. Hey, Comics Legends. How's it going? Hey, thanks, man. Yeah, it'll be up for auction. I'm not gonna lie, laying down the black ink is fun. <laughs> it's the fun part. Thanks, Comics Legend. How <laughs> hard am I sniffing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't think you're supposed to put it right up your nose. <laughs> Sometimes you get lost and you're just working like on some of these old markers and you're just like before you know it you're starting to get a, a little bit of a buzz going right oh man what am I doing before you know it you just like order three hundred dollars worth of knickknacks on on all my uh, home shopping network something else in here. I'm gonna add, I was thinking I'm going to do some Zipatone. Japanese Zipatone up in here. You need to find me after three hours of working to order your commission. slow on that one tune can you expound on that one for me let's see uh, yes yes that's what I was gonna do I was thinking of making uh, where is my markers I was going to make um, Zipatone. Uh, I think, I don't know if you're all familiar with what Zipatone is, but there's some Zipatone right here from the leader. This is the junior version. 
I bought I bought this one. I thought it was gonna be like the size inside of the uh, pack, and it's not. Oh, time's up already. Looks like I've been on here for about two hours, so probably gonna be wrapping it up shortly. <laughs> you buy a buy a burger and fries and do a mural in your house <laughs> because of the ink sniffing. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, just get a, the munchies so bad. I'm willing to do a willing to do a mural, and then I I don't know why I end up painting the outside of your house too. Like, I don't know how I did that. Maybe you threw her in a shake, a chocolate milkshake. Let's see. And then I end up mowing your lawn for like <laughs> mowing your lawn for a pizza. Oh yeah, yeah. Sometimes I do that if I if I'm not really sure positive about it, like what the look I want. But with this one, I got some really light zip of tone. See, still kind of wet in some areas. Gotta be careful here, but yeah. You can kind of see, like in the shadows, like in his neck here, I was gonna put a little bit in the front of the face. Kind of have like a little bit of an under lighting actually, but, or back lighting from this lightning, but I was gonna throw a little bit of zip of tone, just really light. Cause I don't want to use Copic marker. I already did on the uh, Shazam's tight. Also a little bit on the the kid's hair. Man, where is that? I gotta finish this one up though. Probably finish this one up tonight. And then I have another auction piece that I'm going to have up as well. And I got it right here. I'm still in the pencil phase. But I will have it done as well. This is going to be uh, Battle Angel Alita. I'm going to use Zipatone as well on her body. And then I'm going to draw the detail of her body armor and everything. But right now this is the basic, uh, basic structure and layout of this piece. It's going to have some background in it too. So it's going to be dirt and stuff flying, debris. Maybe some robot body parts. But I'm going to be doing that with the ink nib. I'll finish it up tomorrow so it'll be done in time for auction and um, either or I might do one of those I'm gonna do one of those on Mike's auction blacklist universe channel um, and I'm gonna see if I can get in on maybe see if I can get on on Ethan's I don't know if he's doing on Saturday we'll see he's probably got a full house but we'll I'll check with Mike and see if there's a if I can sneak in and get a spot <laughs> Is it wrong that you would leave your wife for Alita? <laughs> well, Alita is uh, a cyborg, right? I mean, sure, she could, like, do a lot of stuff. I mean, she definitely could uh, mow the lawn and paint the house with no problem. Not even getting tired. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. So Ethan might do it once a month. Alita or the auctions? <laughs> yeah, after this, I'll ask Mike. Let's see what's what's up. Let's see here. But yeah, this is the piece I'm going to be doing, just doing a little bit more. I'm just going to, um, once I find my Copic marker, I'm going to try to put some more gray in some areas like in the hat 
as well as the um, eyes of a kid's hat and a kid's eyes. I just do not know where I put that marker. Oh, well, I think I know where it is. There we go. Some lovely cool pictures. Here we go. I used this one. Kind of dark. And see, I wanted to do this during the uh, drawing quarter, but the time was ticking away. I didn't have time to draw in the eyes. So yeah, I'm just going to wind it down for tonight. I actually did a little longer on the streaming than I planned. I only planned to do like an hour tonight, but started getting into it and some of you guys just jumped in. <laughs> Is it wrong that you would leave your wife for Alita? <laughs> Be careful that she's not standing behind you right now reading this. <laughs> and you can find out how wrong it really is. <laughs> oh, Ben, Ben Jones, oh, Asgard, okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, you said you backed a lot of different books, uh, too. A lot of the CG books, uh, cool. I'm not familiar with all of them. Um, just some of the major ones. Of course, like Mike. Mike and Ethan. But, um, and, um, Malin's. Man, I really like that, um, I saw, I didn't see any other people's books none of the art or anything but I saw some of Mike's pages but I saw um, Malin he did that uh, oh, man I, I, my mind just went down all the um, jawbreakers man the art in that looked great I love the colors really did complement his work too just doing a little bit of touch ups here yeah, I'm gonna tighten up a little bit more on this, on some of the line work. And that's legal. I can do it. The contest is over. Pencils are not down. Yeah, I think I'm gonna uh, call it. Call it quits tonight, at least for the video. And oh wow, you back Bigfoot Bill for five hundred. Very very generous. Hope they got some. You got some good stuff for that. Probably got a good tier, right? Oh, that's right, Earthworm Jim Mark. Cool. Definitely a good, uh, yeah, and thanks for backing Agenda, too, to him. Appreciate it, man. Really do. Like, when people, like, I don't know, I, it's a big deal to me when people back my stuff. I really appreciate it, because I know how it is when no one gives a care <laughs> about your art or about what you're doing, so 
every single person who likes my stuff I, I appreciate very much do not take it for granted at all funny watching this video I can see the video is like behind where I'm actually at so I can watch myself use this marker if I stop it's crazy it's got a little delay on the uh, video Shazam. Let's see. Oh, that's cool. Ink drawing and your name in the credits. <laughs> so I can see where I should have stopped. Yeah, I'm like, no, 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 stop, stop, stop. It's like you're trying to warn yourself in the pa from the future. You're trying to warn your past self, but you just, there's no way of doing it. So, <laughs> I remember last night I was racing while, uh, <laughs> well, Ed was, Edward, Edwin was, uh, you know, the pencils were down and I was like erasing while he was talking and he was like are you working out still and I'm like no man I said I'm using he th I think he thought my um eraser stick was like a pen or something because I was erasing with it that's funny now I was using this it's like no man I ain't no I ain't no cheater just erasing, erasing, uh, and some people in the comments were like, erasing is work still working on it. And I'm like, I remember the last stream I was, I mean, the last, uh, drawn and quartered, I asked if it was okay to erase. And they're like, the artist of uh, the artist were like, yeah, of course you can erase. Still didn't do a lot of erasing. I should do a little more. But yeah, yeah. Thanks, guys, for stopping by. Um, let's see. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. And yeah, next time you see this, it'll be finished, and it'll be either up on um, Blacklist Universe channel on YouTube for the Friday night auction. And I'll find out, if, like I said, if Ethan, I'd like to get on Ethan's with one of them, because I have another Battle Angel Alita. Um, but if that's only once a month, then yeah, I probably, I might just do them both on um, Mike Miller's channel tomorrow. Hey, thanks Rod Will, Stevens. Good night, I'll see you guys later. Yeah, good night, Comics Legend, Toon. Good night, all good, 53. Everyone out there, Becky, and uh, whoever, Illustration by Design, whoever else is out there, thanks for stopping by. Don't, oh yeah, don't forget the like button. Hit that like button. I don't know what that really means, hit the like button. So I hear everyone else say it, so I'm just following the suit. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, have a good night, you guys. Thanks for stopping by. As always, good chatting with you, hearing from you guys. And... Uh, yeah, like I said, Friday night auctions. This will be up. I believe this is the piece I'm going to have. And then the Battle Angel Lita. I might have that one as well. I'm going to find out about Ethan's streams. If that's once a month. So, thanks for the heads up on that, Comics Legend. 
So I'll talk to you guys later, man. You guys have a good night. King Crow, thanks, man. Thank you very much. You have a good night, too. And uh, good night to you, Mike, they said. Night. Toom. So have a good one, you guys. I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.